So I realized that I talk a lot about gimbals and which one you should get and different kinds of comparisons, but I never really dive into how I properly use a gimbal. Now I've done a couple of videos in the past about the different ways you can use a gimbal, but I want to specifically dive into how I use them for my weddings and commercial shoots. So with that being said, let's just dive straight into it. And the first thing is balancing your gimbals. You have to make sure that all three axes on your gimbal is balanced properly. I have a video up here about balancing your gimbal and that goes into a more in-depth analysis and explanation of how to balance your gimbal and why you should balance your gimbal. But basically the rundown is that if you don't balance your gimbal, you do end up with shaky footage, you ruin your motors a lot faster and your batteries will drain a lot quicker. Once you do have your gimbal balanced properly, it should not fall forwards or backwards or tilt to the side of any sorts. It shouldn't move at all. It should just stay completely still before you turn on the motors. Now once you have your gimbal balanced, the second one, and this one's super obvious, is to move your camera. Gimbals were designed with one specific purpose in mind and that is to get super smooth moving shots in your footage. This makes it feel a lot more dynamic and a lot more cinematic. There are tons of different types of shot choices such as the push in or push out, the orbit shot, the sliding shot, angle shot. There are so many ones. You can just pick one of them and you'll be good to go. And this especially applies when I'm shooting weddings where the couple might not be doing much. They're playing around with their hair, kind of standing still, fixing their bow tie or their tie or something like that. And it doesn't seem to call for a lot of movement in your camera. But I think that's really important to keep your camera moving at all times because you might end up cutting one of those small tiny movements into your final film. And that might be a little bit less boring if you have some sort of move and incorporate it in it. Number three, plan your shot. Knowing where your camera is moving, your gimbal is moving, whether or not you're moving or your subject is moving is really crucial to getting good gimbal shots. On weddings, we have to know what the couples are gonna be doing, whether they're moving forward, walking around, or laughing, or hugging, or kissing, or you know, fixing their bow tie or something like that. You have to know what they're doing and then you can plan out whether or not you're gonna get a wide shot, a close up, or a push in shot, or a follow shot, or an orbit shot. There are lots of tiny moments moments in every wedding shoot. So you have to be prepared to move your camera a lot. Tip number four is to have something moving in the foreground, whether that's the ground, the wall, a fence, a tree. You wanna have something in the foreground to create that sense of depth in your shot. When I'm shooting my videos, I usually have something like a tree or a table in the foreground. And this way, when I'm moving my camera, I'm passing by the object in order to create and exaggerate that sense of movement in my shot. Here's an example of a shot that's moving with no foreground element. And then here's that same shot with a foreground element in it. And you see in the second one, it makes the shot a lot more dynamic and pleasing to look at. So when you're out shooting, definitely try to look around your surroundings and see what you can use as foreground elements. And lastly, number five, you wanna use what's called the ninja walk or the heel to toe walk. Basically what you're doing is rolling your feet from heel to toe so that you minimize the up and down movement, which is something that a three axis gimbal can't account for. And to show you an example, here's a shot of me walking around normally. And then here's that same shot with me using the ninja walk technique. And you can clearly see that in the second shot, you eliminate a lot more of that up and down movement. And while this technique won't completely 100% eliminate that problem, it does give you the chance to smooth it out a little bit more with warp stabilization in post. That's it for this video. I hope it helps you guys learn a little bit more about how to use your gimbal properly. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell to get notified of every video that I post. My name is Alex Chung, and I'll see you later. Bye.